Today on Judge Faith, a group trip to an Indianapolis motorcycle rally ends in a battle over unpaid bills. My husband had a dream to go back to Sturgis. Sturgis is a motorcycle rally that is held in South Dakota. We took my husband's ashes with us. He was the only one that went for free, Your Honor. Not only did the biker have a motorcycle, bikers about loyalty, honesty, trustworthiness. Why do you say that you believe she hit someone's bike? And later, a disgruntled car buyer demands her money back after the used car she purchased breaks down on an Atlanta expressway. You know, nobody's ever come to me with any problems. And the car started smoking, and everybody was trying to flag me down. I didn't, no, I didn't notice it first. Because it's a car with 170,000 miles on it. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Deborah Deming says she coordinated a group motorcycle trip, but when the time came to square up the bill, the defendants refused to pay. She's suing for the balance owed on a trip. She's accompanied in court today by Kevin Bell. Defendants Rebecca and Daniel Roth say they don't owe because Deborah overcharged them so she could get a free trip. They're countersuing for reimbursement of trip expenses. All rise. Court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Deming versus Roth and Roth. Thank you, Juan. Deborah Deming? Yes, ma'am. You are suing the defendants Rebecca Roth and Daniel Roth? Yes. yes for $643, you say they owe you for the balance of a trip? Yes, you Your took Honor. Together? And you are countersuing for $1,053 for reimbursement of trip expenses? Correct. Yes. Okay, and, and you brought a witness with you today, ma'am. Kevin Bell? Yes, Your Honor. So I'll start with you, Ms. Deming. Give me some background. Tell me how you know the defendants. Your Honor, I met the defendants at a bar that I work at. Uh, about three and a half years ago. We became very good friends. Uh, I lost my husband two years ago. They were very supportive when I lost my husband. Okay. My husband had a dream to go back to Sturgis. Sturgis is a motorcycle rally that is held in South Dakota. The year we went was the 75th anniversary. We took my husband's ashes with us. He was the only one that went for free, Your Honor. Everybody else had to pay their share. Everyone else had to pay. He okay. was the only Some one that paid more free. than our share. <laughs> I know you decided to take this trip together, and you met at the bar, as she mentioned. Yes, we right. did. Yeah. And are you bikers? Yes. yes, we are. And what does that mean? Not only did biker have a motorcycle, bikers about loyalty, honesty, charity, brotherhood. Are you a part of a, a group or organization? Yes, I'm a Patriot Guard rider where we escort military funerals. And I'm also American Legion rider post 497 in okay. Indianapolis. Okay, what is the event in, you said it was the 75th anniversary of an event in Sturgis. Mm -hmm. what, what is that event? It's a motorcycle rally where people from all over the world participate this year. At the 75th anniversary, there was a million two bikes. Wow. And it was a dream that my husband had to go back to there. Had and you ever been before? We went in 1989. Have the two of you been? Yes, I, I had. He had, but okay. I had not. It was, my, it was my first experience. Okay, so tell me what happened. You decide to go, 75th yes. anniversary. Tell me about the conversation you had with the defendants. How we did it come up? We were all standing outside smoking, and I was telling them that my husband had promised my brother, who had just bought a bike, to take him to Sturgis. Mm -hmm. And they said, we would love to go. I said, sure. So then we found out that they rented motorhomes in Sturgis at the Buffalo Chip Campgrounds. You could get a motorhome, a golf cart, and everything total. What did you need a golf cart for? Well, because get the around the campground. Okay, it's like six hundred acres. The campground, right? Is huge. It's a huge okay, campground. It's so, like a, a town. So before the trip, you decide how all of you are going to get there. Right. Where you're going to stay, mm -hmm. the expenses for the golf cart, what do you say they did not pay? They did not pay all of the money for the trip going down. Mm -hmm. The trip going down should have been $9.36 per person. We added towels, linen, and dishes to the motorhome, which was $211 with taxes. The only money I received from them was a check 
for $1,912. Which was before the trip. Then that was After before the trip. After the trip, you said those are expenses that they did not pay Correct. and that they should pay. Did all of you get along at this trip? How was the event? Well, the very first day we got there, we're unloading the camper, and Rebecca had agreed that she would drive the golf cart the whole time that we were there. So we get there, and we're unloading everything, and I said to Rebecca, why don't you have Dano run you down on the trike, which is his motorcycle, is a trike, and pick up the golf cart? She said, okay. He did. When she came back, she said, Dano was screaming at me. A guy was screaming at me saying I hit his motorcycle. Somebody said she hit his bike. She said she didn't hit his bike. Okay. I thought it was over. Coming up, the details of the story are disputed. The main gentleman came out and he said, I think you're involved in a scam. Did the insurance company contact you about this accident? And later, an unhappy Atlanta driver demands her money back after the used car she purchased breaks down. I uh, looked at the car and uh, I asked him again, was anything wrong with the motor or the transmission? The car is not working. Plaintiff Deborah Deming says Rebecca and Daniel didn't pay their fair share of the trip expenses. She's suing for the balance owed for a trip. She's accompanied in court today by Kevin Bell. Defendants Rebecca and Daniel Roth say they don't owe because Deborah overcharged. They're countersuing for reimbursement of trip expenses. So what happened? The guy inside of the security office, the main gentleman, came out and he said, I think you're involved in a scam. I think someone's trying to get money from you. It's crazy. <laughs> After the trip, did the insurance company contact you about this accident? They did. And uh, we turned it over to our insurance company. The insurance company ruled that it didn't actually happen. There was not enough evidence. There was But why no... did that become a dispute between the two of you? Because we came back from a ride and we were at the campsite and I walked up and she said the police are looking for you and that and you got a warrant out, warrant for, your out for your arrest and you owe this guy all this money and all this kind of stuff and I I got really upset with her. She had also given them my information. So you felt like her just voluntarily giving over she all of your information bus. Yes. was she was doing too much. Right. And, and it didn't actually and happen. And you were being accused and you falsely accused according to you. Right. And okay. I never ever was talked the police never came and talked to me. Nobody ever, ever said anything. Everything was relayed through her only. Why do you say that you believe she hit someone's bike? Well, because on Friday, when I came back from the ride, the South Dakota Police Department was at our campsite looking for me for a hit and run accident. Along with him, he brought the gentleman whose motorcycle was hit. And that gentleman looked at you and said, it's not this you. This is not the woman that hit me. After the trip, they send you a total. They say this is what exactly. you owe. Exactly, she did. Why do you dispute that? We had all five decided to go on this trip. Her stepson had a campsite as well there, and um, it was raining, and so we all decided it was okay for him to put their tent on our little camp area. But my question to Deb was, is if he actually bought a campsite, mm -hmm. and they were like 900 and some dollars for this campsite, he stayed there the whole seven days on our mm -hmm. campsite. I think that the issue was in the end, you asked about dividing the food between everyone, and she said yes, that yes. was divided between all right. of you, right? Do you have the text messages? Yes, ma'am. Let me see the text messages, please, on the phone. Thank you, Lauren. Because here's what happens. This was submitted in evidence, but I always like to see it on the phone so I can scroll and see the entire conversation. After the trip is over, she sends you a breakdown of what you owe for right. the balance of the trip. Yeah. And it's $443. This is not including the $500 deposit you say you lost because of the awning. She sends you a, a total invoice, $443, and she sends you a breakdown what it includes food, booze, hotels going down, things of that nature. And you respond and you say, looks right to me. So how has that changed? Did you know about these text messages? No, uh, uh, I knew text messages. Did you when know it, that she told her that she owed her $411? Everybody had a different job to do. And the women were taking care of the money. My job was to get a trailer and some transportation, which got switched around on me at the last minute, so. You're blaming her. You say the women no, are taking not. care of it. Let me let me tell you what. Like, no. I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go further than the text messages tell you about the conversation. They're discussing the money. 
And then she tells her, sir, let me talk to Dano and see what he wants to do. He's being stubborn, men. Did you know she threw you under the bus like that? <laughs> mm, yeah. She's blaming this on you. <laughs> she said, you're the one being stubborn. You're the reason no. why they, you haven't paid, the two of you. Why do you think she owes for the awning? Well, because we were all five splitting everything. The awning was damaged. We were all gone from the motor home. Except Kevin. Except for Kevin. I was, I was gone that, when that storm hit. You were I gone could, where, sir? I had gone to get something to eat up, up uh, further into the campground. Uh -huh. And when that storm hit, I come riding back as quick as I could on the bike, and it was hailing and wind blowing. Who has video of this event? I have a video of the day that it rained, and it kind of shows you kind of what it looks like a little bit. It doesn't just okay. rain there, it pours. Pours. OK, let me take a look at that. That was about that much water in about five minutes. Five minutes. And we've had storms like this. Probably a couple of times while we were there. Did you see how the awning was broken? Did you see what happened with yeah, it? Yeah, right as I went to roll it up, the wind caught it, and it, it just ripped the end of it. Right OK, as and they charge you for in. that. And so you want to split the deposit five ways? Correct. Because you all used the motor home when you were there. You Correct. agreed and told her after the fact in several text messages that you were trying to pay her, you were trying to get her money, that you knew you owed her money. You even blamed your husband at one point and, and said that he was being stubborn, blamed it on the men. She, he, and he's telling me that the women were supposed to take care of the money. So the women are going to take care of the money. I'm going to take care of it today. Here's what we're yes. going to do. Your Honor, they didn't charge me the extra. They settled for the $500 deposit. I appreciate your honesty on that. So it was only $500. Yes, ma'am. They okay, only charged so then $200. They, they, yes, so here's what we're going to do. $411, you admit you owed her after the trip was over, in addition to the $200 for, that I think it's fair to split between the five of you for the damage to the camper. So that's a total of $611. Your counterclaim is dismissed, judge before the plaintiff. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. It's really sad that a friendship that was very golden and really worth a lot now has been broken and never will ever be repaired. If they'd have just met and looked at the paperwork, we wouldn't be here today, and it is very sad. Plaintiff Jeanette Day says the defendant sold her a used car that had no problems, but it broke down a week later. She's suing for a refund for a car and repair costs. Defendant Franklin Walden says he doesn't know because Jeanette checked out the car before she bought it, and he sold it as is. Jeanette Day? Yes? You are suing the defendant Franklin Walden? Yes, Your Honor. For $1,003, a refund for a car you say you purchased from him? Yes, Your Honor. And repair costs? Okay. Why don't you tell me what happened? What kind of car did you purchase from the defendant? I purchased a 1996 uh, Mercury Sabre from the defendant here. And um, this is it. Okay. What is this? A photo of the car? Yes. Okay. It's a photo of the car. I called him. I stopped by. I was driving one day, and I stopped by his house. Did you I know him before him. making this purchase? No. You were just driving by, and there was a car. You saw that there was a car for sale. Yes. At his house. In the yard. Mm -hmm. And I called him. I asked him uh, what was wrong with the car and how much did he want for it. And how much did he say he wanted for it? He said he wanted a thousand for it, but I talked him down to seven hundred dollars. So you negotiated. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Walden, yes, this was your car? Yes, Your Honor. That you owned? Yeah, yes, Your Honor. Why were you selling it? That's what I do. I buy and sell cars. And I uh, usually get a lot of calls about my vehicles. And uh, Ms. Day just happened to be one of the people that called me. Uh, she said she wanted to uh, schedule an appointment to see the car. Uh, so she got over there, and uh, she had a friend with her. And so did you go over and test drive the car, take someone else to look at it? Did you yes, examine I it for yourself? Some, yes, I took a friend with me. And what did you do? I uh, looked at the car, and uh, I asked him again, was anything wrong with the motor or the transmission? OK. And what did he, he say? He told me, no, you can test drive the car. You know, when a friend got there, he looked at the car, she looked at the car. They asked me some questions. I told them everything that was going on with the What did you say? Um, I told them the service engine light is on. Well, did you see that the light was on? No, I didn't, because okay. I wasn't sitting on it. I was sitting on the patch, so I didn't see that. You're suing because you say he sold you a lemon. Yes, he did. Why do you say it's a lemon? Coming up on Judge Faith, more problems with a car emerge. That was the engine need. And then they also need a Cadillac converter on that also. So they told you the engine was no good? 
Plaintiff Jeanette Day says Franklin told her the used car had no problems. She's suing for a refund for a car and repair costs. Defendant Franklin Walden says he doesn't know because the car was sold as is. When did you find out he sold you a lemon? Well, I found it out after I got the tag and the stuff, then I was able to drive the car. Okay. That's when everything started happening. What happened? What happened, the car started smoking. The first day you started driving it? Yes. It started, it started smoking. smoking real bad, and everybody was trying to flag me down on the side of the spirit because I, you know, I didn't notice it first. I was terrified because I thought the car would burn up on the side of the road. And then after that, I went ahead that fix. I got that fix. How much would it cost to fix that? What was the problem? It was, uh... A lot of a leakage going on on the car. They stopped the leakage. What did they say the problem was? The engine, the transmission? That was the engine then. Okay. Really why they, they were like that, and then they also need a Cadillac converter on that also. So they told you the engine was no good? No, the engine was good. It was something that's a part on the engine that they fixed on that, that day. Okay, go ahead, sir. Okay, the service engine light was on, but uh, from what I've learned, because uh, I've been selling cars for about 10 years, uh, and, you know, nobody's ever come to me with any problems. Um, you know, with that car right there, the service engine light, what it could have been, it was a sensor. Because all the time, it's not, and it's not, it doesn't mean that something's wrong with the car. But you told the her that there may have up. been an issue with the car. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I, I told her that. Do you have anything in writing about the sale of this car? Well, yeah. When I sold the car to Miss Day, I, yeah, I have a bill of sale right here. Okay, let me see the bill uh, of sale. I sold it to her as is. Okay, so you buying a used car, a 1996 Mercury Sable with 170,000 miles on it. Yes. Bound to be some problems at some point with this car. The vehicle is being sold as is, meaning there's no warranty for any defect or any repairs, meaning you buy the car or you leave the car. But if you buy it, it's yours. He also told me he was going to give me my money. And what happened with that? Uh, when Miss Day called me, she was telling me this is my first time somebody uh, wanted a refund. And, uh, you know, Ms. Day was telling me that she wants her money back. And I told her I can't do that because I sold the car to her as is. And she said, well, I need $100 or something. And I told her, you know, just out of the goodness of my heart, that, okay, I'll, you know, I can give her $100. I didn't have it to give to her right then. But I knew in a couple of weeks that I might be able to give that to her. And I thought if that's all she wanted, then that's not a problem. I told her that's not a problem. When there's no warranty on the car, when there are no specific guarantees about the car, by default, it's an as-is sale. But you have a contract here where it actually states this car is sold as is. Because courts don't expect people to know everything that's wrong with a 1997 Mercury Sable that has 170,000 miles on it. The car may run for another good two hours. The only thing that would excuse this as is sale is if you tell me he committed intentional fraud when he sold you the car. And that's not what I'm hearing. Coming up, Judge Faith rules. And now, Judge Faith rules. When you buy a car, when it's sold as is, that means that you are purchasing the car with all issues known and unknown. You have to do your due diligence as a buyer when you purchase an as is car to have it checked out. No one wants to do it because they don't want to spend 100 or $200 to have an actual mechanic take a look at it and say, yeah, this car looks pretty good. I think you're good. But it's not his responsibility, it's your responsibility. Essentially, when he sells the car as is, that is freeing him of all legal recourse associated with the car, ma'am. That is the law. Judgment in this case is for the defendant. That I came all the way down here to California and still ain't got no nothing done about it. People need to stop selling bad-ass cars to folks. I sold the car to Ms. Day as is, and the judge knew that. And, you know, I gave her just what I told her that I was going to give her. We're always interested in what you have to say about our cases. Write us with your thoughts or comments. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or my Instagram. I look forward to hearing from you. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.